Ryan works in. Poirier, long reach shot scores! Jeremy Poirier sneaks one in for the point, and Canada takes a one nothing lead. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Liu from NHL Draft Central and today we'll take a closer look at 2020 NHL Draft top prospect Jeremy Poirier. Playing a skilled and flashy offensive-oriented game, the Canadian defenseman has gained attention from NHL scouts all around the league for his elite offensive skills and tremendous potential. After posting 31 points in 40 games in Major Triple A, Poirier was selected 8 overall in the 2018 QMJHL draft by the St. John Sea Dogs. Joining a young core of elite talent in St. John, the 6 foot left handed defenseman didn't take long to emerge as a top prospect, putting up 21 points in 61 games while showing flashes of brilliance offensively and displaying high poise and confidence for his age. After an excellent performance at the Linka Gretzky, collecting 3 points in 5 games, Poirier returned to St. John facing high expectations to start the season. With now 34 points, it's safe to say he has responded well to the pressure. At first glance, it's pretty easy to understand why he is regarded as one of the top defensemen of his class. He's a skilled and talented puck rushing defenseman who can dominate in the offensive end using his elite puck skills, excellent offensive instincts, and great creativity. I've rarely seen someone this talented at this age. But as you catch more of his play, some questions start to rise up. His decision making and overall play in the defensive end are areas of concern. His risk of his style of play leads to many unsuccessful gambles and poor decisions. To get a better idea of what are the risks and rewards with him, let's look at every aspect of his game, starting from the top. Without a doubt, Poirier's greatest skill is his stick and lean, mostly due to him owning some of the best ends of the draft. I can't think of many defensemen coming in their draft year with this level of talent. He's simply a wizard with a puck, creating so many opportunities for himself with crazy dangles or flashy digs. He has some amazingly soft mitts and each move seems so effortless. He's a shifty and creative attacker who uses quick cuts and direction changes to destabilize his opponents. He has shown the ability to break down defenses and dance around opponents with quick creative moves. His incredible puck skills helps him move the puck up the ice and find creative paths to the offensive zone. He's able to rush from one end to another with so much ease. It's crazy. He generates so many controls on entries thanks to his quick deceptive hands fulfilling his role as a puck rushing defenseman. He passes through traffic seamlessly and keeps control of the puck in tight space. His impressive puck handling abilities gives him the confidence to step up when he has the opportunity and is adept at creating room for his shot with quick fakes and hesitations. In a more basketball term, he's able to create his own shot. That means he's not only finishing plays, but he doesn't rely on others to create his scoring chances and he can be the driver on his team. Alongside some slick sidesteps, he uses his shifty mitts to escape pressure at the point and step up in the attacking zone. He handles the puck extremely well, even with pressure coming from behind. That said, Poirier is also responsible for his fair share of turnovers. He sometimes forces plays that aren't there and tries to get through defenses unsuccessfully. That's just something you must be willing to live with, since he brings so much offensively. His puck protection is decent. He excels at keeping the puck far away from poke checks, but his poor strength and balance contours most of it. Saying he's an exceptional puck handler is an understatement at this point, because he can dominate games simply using his puck skills. There is a huge upside here. Poirier is probably my favorite player to watch, and a big part of it is his stick handling abilities. He's a moving highlight, and if he fixes some of his weaknesses we'll talk later on, he could become a fan favorite at the NHL level. Poirier is a smart offensive defenseman who can pick apart defenses with his impressive anticipation, deceptivity and creativity. Thanks to his great vision and offensive instincts, he showed the ability to read, process and react to informations very quickly. He's able to see plays developing before anyone else and be proactive in the play. 
He jumps on the offense at any given opportunities, always looking to cut passing lanes and get on the counter attack to support the rush. Take this play for example. As soon as he sees his teammate recover the puck, he jumps on the rush to create offensively. A perfect display of how his excellent anticipation and offensive instincts gets him one step ahead of his competition. These gambles help him get many opportunities on the outbreak, especially as the odd man behind. He follows the action closely and somehow always finds a way to get into open space to receive the disc. This action displays it perfectly. As the puck is turned over, he wastes no time by jumping on the rush immediately. He gets into open space and takes a good shot on net. Or on display, Poirier showcases his excellent anticipation by jumping into the open space quickly. This was not the best execution, but you can see that he takes the game quickly. These small plays are what ends up making him a dangerous offensive threat. Poirier also loves to pinch and hold his blue line to keep the attack alive as long as possible. For instance, on this play, he sees his opponent slightly mishandling the puck and anticipates the chance to recover the disc, which leads to a great scoring chance. The Canadian defenseman is a crafty and deceptive puck handler who covers his intentions very well. He can distribute no-look passes with prowess, using that small hesitation to sell the shot perfectly. He's really tough to read, as he stays shifty and unpredictable in his moves. This allows him to keep his opponent at his mercy and create space where he wants. He is really strong at holding on to pucks with quick fakes and hesitations to create leeway for himself. He especially loves to use that quick shot fake to come down the point and find better shooting lanes. Looking at this play for example, as Poirier receives the puck, he sees an opponent get into the lane. He makes a small hesitation to sell the shot and step up into the open shooting lane for the goal. On this action too, he winds up for a big slap shot which gets him past the block shutter. Like you can see, his deceptivity is a big part of his shot creation. Poirier is a dynamic attacker as well, he can adapt to what's in front of him and exploit any defenses with his creativity. He keeps his head up and finds clever ways to create offensively, whether it's to get to the slot or make room for his shot. I love this play by Poirier, as he steps up from his blue line. Rather than lock himself between two players, he decides to make a quick pass which helps him open himself with a direct path to the net. He finds creative paths to the zone entry, displaying a good read and a shifty agility. He doesn't settle for less, he tries to find ways to get to the slot and improve his scoring chances. Take this play for example. He could take the wrist shot like many would, but instead sees the open space and jumps into the slot for a more dangerous scoring chance. Will there be that much open space handed out to him at the NHL level? Probably not, but it's great to see him make reads like that and use his creativity. If his stick handling is his best strength, I think it's his offensive instincts, deceptivity and creativity that will allow him to make a real impact at the initial level. But watching him dominate offensively night after night also allows us to puzzle out some of his deficiencies. His risk heavy style of play leads to many unsuccessful gambles and bad turnovers, and his decision making can sometimes feel questionable. He often tries to force plays by himself when a simpler one that involves teammate is a smarter and more efficient decision. An offensive puck moving defenseman like Poirier is bound to make mistakes at some point and you have to live by that knowing he brings more on the offensive end. In Poirier's case though, it's becoming too much of a recurrent thing. Let's take a look at some of his mistakes to learn what still needs work in his decision making. First of all, he loves to control the puck which means you'll often see him move the disc up the ice by himself, to the point of even forcing zone entries that are simply uncalculated. Although a good end-to-end -end rush is always fun to watch, I found him much more effective when he opened the play at the zone entry. I've seen him countless times make perfect passes to the neutral zone, which advances his team much more than when he simply trapped himself at the blue line. He's a great puck-moving defenseman but the offense seems too focused on rushing up the ice that he misses some of his passing options, which are key to progress the offense. Taking a look at this play, Poirier completely missed his open teammate at the blue line, which would have been a great control zone entry. Instead, he tries to get through four opponents and loses the puck. You can't contain skilled creative players from playing their game, but I'd like to see him stay more aware of his options and choose his opportunities more wisely. I know he's able to as he showcased in the past, 
and he's been improving in that area recently too. Just the last 5-6 games, he's been much more consistent, opening the play with great outlets. Hopefully that continues. Poirier is also at the wrong end of many turnovers that can be mostly associated with his poor decision making. He has had difficulties with his reads, often forcing plays that aren't there or taking unnecessary risks. There's a time and place for everything and Poirier will have to learn to jump on the right occasions and settle for smarter passes when it's time to. That being said, it's great to see him try new things and display his full creativity and skills. I'd rather have a player that needs to be toned down a bit than someone that isn't able to bring much offensively. For a player who loves to have the puck on his stick and drive the play, I'm surprised at how easily he's willing to give out the position of the disc. He's throwing many lob passes to nobody and icing the puck on numerous occasions on the breakout. I think he has the ability to make great plays in those situations. He just needs to learn to read his options and take smarter decisions. The sport reads it perfectly. I mean, Poirier has a lot of time to look at his options on display, but it still somehow ends out the puck to the opposing team. That might simply be a personal opinion, but I don't like to see a defense man give out the position of the puck like that. After opting to create more for his teammate last year, Poirier has come out this season with a shot first mentality. He has quickly become a volume shooter, averaging 4.6 shots a game as of now, which is a lot for a draft eligible defenseman. And to be fair, he has a very dangerous release, but I'm uncertain about his shot selection. He takes a lot of shots from far away, and sometimes I feel like there's better and more dangerous options around him. For example, I'm not sure a backhander from the blue line was the best and most effective play on this action. It definitely didn't hurt, but I would have preferred to see him use his teammates to open the play. Or on this rush, Poirier possesses some incredible skills but a between the leg shots from the top of the circles doesn't seem productive. That was the time to try to cut the net and finish with the backhand. This comes back to what I said before, I just think he shouldn't force plays and take a smarter approach to the game. He has the creativity and offensive awareness to make those reads. Still, this is a very small detail. It won't be the difference maker of him succeeding at the next level or not. I've mostly highlighted this bad plays here but I've seen games where Poirier has been really impressive in his decision making. It's simply really inconsistent. I believe the decision making is one of the most important aspects for a defenseman, so Poirier will need to work on that. It's definitely a concern to many scouts, but I'm optimistic about his progression since I've seen improvements in that area recently. It will be a key aspect to his transition to the pro level. Now looking at his play under pressure, Poirier is an incredibly calm and confident puck handler. He has a great poise offensively, showing the ability to hold his blue line despite pressure. This was taken from his second QMJHL game ever and he's displaying so much confidence in his ability to step up and play his game. He controls the puck very well with pressure on his back, which allows him to rush the puck up the ice with dexterity. I tend to question his decision making in those situations though. As I discussed before, he sometimes gets rid of the puck too quickly, lots of icing as soon as he senses the pressure. If he can keep the same poise as he does offensively in those situations, he will be a tough player to handle. Poirier has 26 penalty minutes so far this season, and looking at the last two seasons, he takes on average 0.7 penalty minutes a game, which is slightly above average with other draft eligible. He is not a dirty player and he keeps his cool in most situations. There's only one play I didn't really like this season from him. With one second left to a 8-4 blowout for St. John, Poirier winds up a slapper from the middle of the ice. I don't think it's the most respectful play, but he's mostly a pretty disciplined player otherwise. I think Poirier's hockey IQ will be the deciding factor to his success at the NHL level. He has all the offensive tools but needs a finishing touch in his decision making. Poirier is a dangerous threat when it comes to goal scoring. He has displayed time and time again his shooting prowess, showing the ability to score from anywhere up the ice and finish the play with elite accuracy. Preaching a shot first mentality this season, he has accumulated 193 shots on goal in 40 games so far this season for best in the league. His quote in a TSN interview resumed pretty well. When you shoot, 
you never know what's going to happen. He's now taking every opportunity he has to get the puck on goal and create traffic in front. From far away and quickly off the rush, or getting multiple shots on reception from the point, his aggressive style of play has allowed him to collect 11 goals this season, which ranks him very well against the best Q prospects in recent years. Most of his goals come from his ability to create dangerous looks for himself. He gets into favorable positions and can capitalize on his chances. His release is truly impressive, as it's very quick and efficient. I mean, just look at this, it's so smooth. It allows him to get his shot off from tough positions and surprise goalies off balance. His puck delivery is very deceptive and keeps goaltender guessing on every shot. His quick release coming down the rush or stepping up in the attacking zone is his bread and butter. Poirier has developed a wicked slap shot too, and he tends to utilize it more and more nowadays. Not only has he shown the ability to be a scaring threat from far away thanks to an above average accuracy and great power, putting the puck in a dangerous spot creates lots of rebound for his teammate. He excels at putting the puck on net when he gets around the crease thanks to his quick hands and snappy backhand shot, but he lacks the finishing touch to be a real danger up close. He can also strike and shoot out pretty comfortably thanks to his lightning quick release and great puck skills. His incredible release and great all-around scoring tools will help him develop into a potential scoring threat at the NHL level. Although Poirier favors shooting, he is an above average playmaker who has the ability to complete passes all around the ice. He can execute decent passing plays on the breakout to quickly restart the attack and move the play up the ice. He also uses his defense partner very well to open the play and beat for checkers, and his outlet pass gives his team the edge on many transitional plays. I found him very efficient through the neutral zone as he uses teammates to create zone entries. He has displayed a decent vision to find teammates in the attacking zone with excellent cross-ice passes and perfect no-look feeds. He also distributes the puck very well to keep the play alive, and he especially loves to walk the blue line and create room for his teammates. Overall, his playmaking abilities are above average and completes his offensive game very well. Poirier thrives with a puck on his stick and he never shies away from the opportunity to skate the puck out himself. He loves to lead the play up the ice, using his great agility and vision to find skating lanes. He really excels at dodging pressure and dancing around opponents on the rush, which allows him to create countless control zone entries. His shiftiness can be easily noticed as he then goes through traffic and makes quick direction changes in transition. That said, his acceleration and top speed seems lacking a bit to be up par with the best puck rushing defensemen. His first few steps can feel pretty slow and he doesn't possess the high end speed to beat opponents on the fly. Although he's still pretty effective offensively in juniors as he has handed out a ton of space to maneuver, his transition to the pro level will present itself as a challenge. His lack of quickness is particularly noticeable when he attempts to defend rushes as he gets passed on multiple occasions by speedy attackers. Not only is his pivot pretty slow, he lacks the explosion as well as the speed to catch up with his rivals. If he has difficulties at this level, there's some obvious concerns about his play in a much faster pace NHL. He will have a lot of work to do to unlock his top speed and quickness, but on a more encouraging note, I've seen some improvement in Poirier's stop and speed. He's much faster in rushes nowadays and his foot speed seems better, which is the first step every scout wants to see. I was very impressed with his mobility as well. His great lateral quickness is on display every game as he walks the blue line and controls the attack. He uses a smooth side step to escape pressure and stay active on the breakout, which gives him the edge to step up on the play and find a teammate on the outlet. His footwork is excellent too and he can be very fluid in transition. Despite his great mobility, Poirier skating is still an area to improve. Despite being 6 foot and weighing 199 pounds, Poirier is far from a physical defenseman. His poor strength allows opponents to bypass him pretty quickly and win puck battles without much challenge. He has a nice stick work and board and corner play but he isn't strong enough to outmuscle the opposition. He protects his puck and plays with pressure on his back fairly well, but gets pushed around too easily along the board. He rarely goes out for the hit too. 
I'm liking what I'm seeing from him more recently. He's getting more involved along the board and jumping into physical battles for the position of the disc. That being said, he's still a few years away from being physically mature enough to make a potential jump to the next level. Poirier has had difficulties in his own end for a long time. It was a problem in Midget Tripoli and still is in juniors. The Canadian defenseman has an aggressive approach to the game, which means he's often pinching in tough situations or sacrificing his positioning defensively to look for potential counter-attack. This leads to many turnovers and great look for the opposition, placing his team in very difficult situations at times. But honestly, I'm not overly concerned about that. He'll have his good and bad moments trying to create on the attack. It's part of every offensive defenseman's game. What's more of a concern is his defensive anticipation, positioning and get control. It's probably the first weakness that jumps to the eye when watching him. He simply seems lost in the defensive end. We too often, he gives up the position of the puck with careless passes along the board. He fails to check out his options and ends out the puck to the opposition as they restart their cycle. His poor foot speed and strength allows his opponents to work along the board comfortably and he often seems to put himself in a bad spot to defend. Poirier does possess a very active stick defensively to defend in corners or against the brush. He's able to cut passing lanes and give his rivals a tough time handling the puck with constant stick lifts and poke checks. That being said, not much goes into his favor when he defends the brush. He has a terrible gap control, giving his opponent way too much space and time to maneuver at ease and getting beat flat-footed at numerous occasions. His poor foot speed and quickness makes him the easy target on many outbreaks and speedy wingers pass him on the outside without any difficulties. He's not quick or strong enough to stop attackers from crashing the net, which represents a big issue. On this play for instance, Poirier gives way too much space to the attacker. First of all, you just don't want to give the blue line like that. But then, it still gives him time to analyze the play and maneuver after the zone entry. You would ideally want to be in stick reach of your attacker and push him on the outside. Poirier didn't give him any pressure. Then, he makes his pivot too late and lacks the quickness to catch his men. His poor gap control directly led to a dangerous scoring chance. And that's the case on way too many occasions. On this action, Poirier once again gives up too much space on the zone entry. You obviously want to push the attacker on the outside, but Poirier gives the clear path to the slot. And then, instead of moving his feet to catch up with his men, he watches him dangle his way to a dangerous scoring chance. That's another problem with his defensive play. He's often caught watching and forgets to move his feet to keep up with his rivals. He doesn't adjust to his opponent quickly enough and tries to break over with his stick work alone. I've actually seen him use great stick work to shut down some rushes but it's far from a resolved problem. The NHL is a league where speed and pace of play is becoming the main focus, so it's easy to imagine how Poirier would have difficulties translating his game. He gets beat so easily of the rush, it won't improve at the next level if he doesn't work on it. I could analyze a ton more clips on his poor gap control and defensive deficiencies, but I think the point is pretty obvious. Poirier has a lot to work on before making the jump to the NHL. I'm sure he is well aware of it, because although very small, I've seen him make some stride in this area. Poirier's biggest weakness, in my opinion, is his competitiveness. Way too often, he let his opponents arrive first on loose pucks that he could have easily won. He simply seems to lack the urge to compete and battle in the defensive end. It often seems like he doesn't want to pay the price by taking it or engaging physically to make a play. On this action, for instance, as he sees the forechecker, he seems to give up on the play. And when the puck gets in front, he slides around the net. This brings me to my other point. In situations where one or two more strides would make a world of difference, he often lets his feet slide and forgets to put the extra effort. Once again, I've seen some progression in that aspect. He puts more intensity in board battles nowadays, but it's still very inconsistent. When scouting a prospect, I look for something in his game that makes him special. Something that would not only allow him to stick to the best league in the world, but help him become an impact player there. For Poirier, his skill, offensive talent and creativity are simply amazing. 
If you can capture that, you've got yourself an incredible offensive puck moving defenseman with the potential to become a difference maker in the NHL. Now, there's a lot of concern and red flags surrounding Poirier that will give him a challenge in his transition to the pros. He represents a risky pick for the first round, but in my opinion, he's a great risk. He has such a great potential and I've seen progression in every of his weaknesses. He's an high-risk, high-reward prospect, but one I would take a long look at if I had to make a selection in the 15 to 20 range. At the moment, I see Jeremy Poirier as a mid-first-round prospect and a risk with tremendous potential. Anyway, what's your opinion on Jeremy Poirier? I'd love to read your thoughts and discuss with you in the comments below. Subscribe for more NHL draft related videos and click here to watch my previous scouting reports on 2020 eligible. I'll see you in the next one. Fear not, here I come, you can't hide. Ready or not, here I come.